Hi guys, today is April 21st and we are going to be working with volume today and on the remembering side you're going to be working again with order of operations and you are also going to be working to find the perimeter and area of a rectangle. When you get to the homework side, I'll do um, a little review of order of operations, which you can see I have included right down here below. So you remember what to do first, next, and last. And then um, when you find the perimeter and the area of a rectangle, it is a review of what we did in Unit 8, Lesson 8, the lesson from last Thursday. Remember, um, when you're working with order of operations, the little saying that you can use is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to remember your order of operations or PEMDAS. Um, first is parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, and you go left to right, and then addition and subtraction, left to right. We won't be using exponents right now, but you will in the future, so I left that part in there for you discuss a volume, you need to understand unit cubes. A unit cube is a cube with each edge being one unit long. The volume of a unit cube is one cubic unit. The volume of an object can be measured by filling it with unit cubes without any gaps or overlaps. And you can see up here on the right, and I'm going to circle it here, that is one unit cube. And you can create larger units of volume by stacking cubes together, again with no gaps. What they mean when they say that each edge is one unit long, it's when you look at all of the different edges, it's one unit by one unit, one unit, one unit. And that's what they're talking about, it's one unit deep as well. If you look right here at our first volume, you can see that you have to figure out how many unit cubes there are, and it says cut out the nets. And cutting out the nets to me, if you looked at this, as a loaf of bread and you were to cut it into three even slices, you would cut right along each of these lines here. There's that line and that line. And then you can see across the top that you have three rows. And in each of those rows you can then count the face to know how many cubes there are. And this cube is this face is 3 by 4, which is 12, so you can multiply 3 times the 4, which would give you 12, or you can simply count them to figure out that there are 12 there. And if you have 12 in that first cutout net, and you have 3 nets, you would just have 12 times 3 would give you 36, and so you know that there's 36 cubes in this. And that means that the volume is equal to 36 cubic units. If we're to look at the next picture, we can see that if we cut it into nets again, we could cut it horizontally here, and we can see that we have two nets, or two rows, and it's 2 by 5, which is 10. 2 times 5 is 10, or you could simply count them up, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you know you have two rows, and so you have 10 times 2, which is equal to 20, which gives you 20 for the number of cubes, and it gives you a volume of 20 cubic units. All right, let's start working on our homework side together. Number one says Allison had a box in the shape of a cube. She decided to use centimeter cubes to find the volume of the box. It took 75 centimeter cubes to fill the box with no gaps. What was the volume of the box? Well, if you look at the box here, you can see that it does not give you a very good diagram because you can't see how many cubes are on this side or this side to try to figure out how many there are. But if you actually read the problem again, it tells you that it took 75 centimeter cubes. And that right there is going to be your answer. What is the volume of the box? Well, if it took 75 centimeter cubes with no gaps in between, then your volume is going to be 75 cubic centimeters. Number 2 through 7 tells you to find the number of unit cubes and then find the volume. And again, I recommend that you just cut it into nets and then count that face just like we did on the examples on the previous page here. And this one is 1, 
two, three, four. So there are four nets, so it's four slices deep, and it's a three by four, which is 12. So you're gonna take 12, and you're gonna multiply it by four, and it's gonna be 48. That means that there are 48 cubes. And if there are 48 cubes, it's 48 cubic units. And that would be the volume. Number three, we can cut into slices again and we can see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six slices deep or six nets. You could cut it into six nets and each one is three cubic units. So it's six times three. And so the number of unit cubes is going to be 18. And the volume is going to be 18 cubic units. I am going to do number four with you next. And we can cut it into nets again. And we have to count how many deep. So it's one, two, three nets deep. And it's a three by two shape, which three times two is six. There's six across the front. So it's going to be six times three, because it's three deep, and that's going to be 18. So our answer again is gonna be 18 unit cubes, or 18 cubic units. I believe you can do five, six, and seven on your own. Give it a shot after watching the video. This might be a good place for you to pause as well and just do five, six, and seven before you continue on to the remembering side with me. On the remembering side, it asks us to write the computation in words. And this is where on problems number one, two, three, and four, you're going to write it in words, and then I want you to solve that. And that's where you're going to use the order of operations. But writing the computation in words is going to be our first part. And number one, I'll give you an example, and it says 4.5 divided by 0.5 plus 0.1 or four and five tenths divided by five tenths plus one tenth. And you have to think about order of operations to be able to write this correctly. And so you have to say four and five tenths divided by five tenths then Add one. The reason that order of operations matters here is that you have to make sure that you're adding that one at the end or you're adding the one to whatever 4.5 or 4 and 5 tenths divided by 5 tenths is. If you move on to number two, it says 6 divided by 1 sixth. And you're going to need to write that out as 6 divided by one-sixth. And when you look at number three and four, you're going to do those two on your own. But number four especially, you're going to have to look at what needs to be done first. So check back with your order of operations and make sure when you write out the, write out the computation in words, you do it in the correct order. Numbers five and six are a review of what we did last week. And if you need a little help on those, look at your problems from 8-8, and they are the same thing. Remember, finding perimeter means that you're adding up all of the sides. And so perimeter is equal to the sum of all sides. And then to find area, you're going to simply multiply length times width. You should be able to get through those pretty easily today. If you need any help, as usual, chat me up on Teams or send me an email. I'm happy to help anytime you need it. Get them to me, please, by tomorrow at 3.30 at the latest so that I can get them scored and in the gradebook. I hope you all have a great day. I miss you and take care.